Hey everyone, and welcome to a quick look at the Ultimate Building System. This plugin is a data-driven framework that makes it simple to set up meshes as buildables. The system is modular and easily allows you to change modules such as placement conditions, placement behavior, buildable dependencies, and their snapping points. It is designed to offer the flexibility needed for both simple and complex setups. Let's watch the building system in action first, and then we'll dive deeper into its features and how you can use or modify it for your own game. Now, if we take a buildable definition like this hay storage here, for example, we can see that it has a structure placement dot rotate tag assigned to it. What this does is that I can use this tag to determine if this hay storage can be rotated when placed. So when I left click once, I'm now able to rotate it and then I click again and I place it at that rotation. Of course, if I go ahead and I remove that tag, and then try to place this I, I'm actually not able to rotate it at all so that's uh, an efficient way to easily tell the system hey this one needs to be able to rotate before it's being placed if we then go to a door for example in this case it would be a stone door so we grab this door here and we place it in and we walk up to it we can't really interact with it right now like nothing's happening and if we look inside of the actions menu then we can destroy it move it upgrade or downgrade it but we can't open it so if we remove the door again and we then go in here and we add an action and we go here to toggle door we then go to tags and then we go to action default this allows us to tell the system that this is the default action so for any short interactions by just tapping E uh, the interaction button in this case on the door it will allow us to open it without holding E like this 
Another thing we can easily do is to add physics to objects. For example, this bottle here, if I place it, you can see that it actually has physics as I place it and I can interact with it and so forth. If I wanted to change that, I could simply just change the buildable class in this case to uh, from the physics prop to buildable, for example. A physics prop is still a buildable, it's just a subclass of the buildable class. So if I if I then place it, then it just hangs here in the air. I can then go ahead and remove those and change this back to the physics prop. It again works as a physics. Now a cool another cool thing is that if you go to the proxy behavior, then for for this, let, let's say we wanted to not have this to be a physics prop, we wanted it to actually place it on the ground as a static object. Then we can change it back to a buildable and go to trace behavior and go to trace snap to floor. If I then take the bottle, you can see that it then sits here on the ground instead. As a static object, I can walk onto them and nothing happens. Now, if I then change it over to a physics prop again, and I place it, you'll notice that it does a little bit of a wobble as I place them. And that is because the physics has been enabled again in this case. Now, if we then go take a look at the ceilings, for example, we have this stone ceiling here that we can start filling in. Notice how I cannot place it in mid-air. That is because of a placement condition that we've added called must be snapped. So when it's snapped, it allows us to actually place it. And then at some point, like it's snapped, but it's still not actually allowing us to place anything. That is because of this advanced range placement condition, which has a maximum range of three. Uh, what, what it does is that it, it, it wants to find a foundation within that range. What we also have is a dependency up here, which is also an advanced range dependency, which is similar to the placement condition down here. What that means is that the placement condition allows you to determine when buildable should destroy itself. For example, if I were to remove this one, it also removes the one over here. And it does that because we have a max range of three. So this one here detects when a change happens on the grid. Now let's say you want to extend the ceilings beyond the default range. Then you can use tag qualifier conditions, for example. A pillar here has a neighbor has tag, tag qualifier condition and a mesh overlapping object. What this does is that if I overlap with uh, the ground itself, then it's going to give this pillar a foundation tag, or if I connect it to another foundation, then it's also going to get a foundation tag. So in this case, since ceilings are depending on foundations to be able to expand, then if I add a pillar like this, I'm now able to extend, extend the range of these ceilings. Now, of course, if I then destroy this pillar, then so will the ceilings because they were depending on the foundation tag in this case. This system is designed to be as modular as possible. Let's say you have some functionality that our system do not provide out of the box. Then either you can decide to just extend the buildables or the proxy, or you can also create post build events in here. For example, let's say you create a bomb that needs to be activated or trigger its explosion after a certain amount of time, then you can set that timer with a post build event, for example. Another thing is maybe you want resources to be consumed upon placing a buildable or you don't want to be able to place a buildable unless you have those resources in your character's inventory. Then you create a placement condition that hooks into your inventory system to determine if those items actually exist.